and welcome to this episode of The Security Angle. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at the Cube Research. I am joined today by my friend, fellow analyst, frequent co-host, brilliant engineer, all around amazing person, Joe Peterson. Hello. Good to see you. Wow. What a nice intro. Thank you, Shelley. You know, I, I I am a nice person, but I also really like you and respect you so much. So uh, it's always a pleasure to do these shows with you. So in today's episode, we are talking Black Hat, Black Hat 2024, and we're going to be exploring some of the key takeaways that we have from the event. So some backstory here. A couple of weeks ago, at the beginning of the month, some 22,000 IT pros and vendors made an annual pilgrimage to Mandalay Bay in Vegas, enjoying that 105 degree weather and looking for reasons not to go outside. And you're nodding. If, you, if you're nodding along, you've been to Vegas for a tech event uh, recently, so you understand. Not only was the weather hot, though, the, the heat has unfortunately been turned up in our industry and on many, certainly, security and IT teams in the past month since the CrowdStrike meltdown that occurred in mid-July. So, you know, there were many conversations and lessons learned from that incident, lots of unpacking. Um, but one of the things that we wanted to do before we really dive in talking about some takeaways from the show, we wanted to take a quick look at a report called the State of Cybersecurity in 2024. Um, this particular report was produced by Avanti, and I will say this is not uncommon. This kind of report isn't unusual. This year, I think I've seen them from Verizon, CompTIA, Splunk, Avanti. But today, we're just going to dive in a little bit to Avanti's report. And the heading of their report, it's funny, Joe and I were talking about this in advance of the show, and we really like the fact that the, the heading of the report says in huge letters, inflection point. And I think that that sums up so perfectly where we are right now in, in, uh, you know, in our world, in the world of business, cybersecurity is finally getting the attention it deserves. And, you know, of course, we have many challenges ahead and, and we're going to dive in a little more deeply to this report. But I wanted to just kick it off by saying we are at an inflection point and it's an exciting time to be a practitioner and an analyst and, and a vendor in this cybersecurity space. So. Let's dive in a little bit on that report, my friend. Yeah, let's. Um, and yeah, the heat definitely feels like it's been turned up a little this year. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> um, so the good news first, according to the research, like Shelley said, cybersecurity is finally getting the attention that it deserves. Yet there's some critical hurdles that remain, and that is reducing tech load to dismantling data silos, things like that. Um, but getting it done will require closer alignment between the CIO and the CISO, probably no mystery there. So back to the report, Avanti interviewed 7,000 leadership level executives, and that was cybersecurity professionals, um, you know, across the world. And 73% of leadership level, uh, pardon me, leadership level executives and IT security professionals um, tell us that security budgets are on the rise. We like that. Please, right? Nice. Plus, plus. <laughs> um, and just to keep things broad here, y'all probably know this, but in an IT budget, depending upon the vertical, cybersecurity spend is typically 6 to 12%. Where you see that 12% happening is verticals where they have high regulatory considerations. Yeah. Right? So think... Think healthcare, think finance, think yeah. where there's, there's regulatory constraints and, you know, they, they have to adhere to a higher level of things, right? So, um, so that budget is going to raise a little bit. Will it, will it get, will it exceed six to 12% of the total IT spend? Don't know. Um, you know, next, next bullet point in the Avante study was that 87% said that their organization's 2024 budget is sufficient to meet their goals and they're investing in a mix of established and emerging technologies from cloud and data security to identity threat protection and generative AI. That's where they're spending their money. 91% um, viewed security as a core strategic asset within their organization. That makes me very happy. Me too. And then cybersecurity or security preparedness is improving overall. So 57% say they felt more prepared 
to defend against cybersecurity attacks compared to one year ago. That's what we want. Uh -huh. Right. That's what we want. Well, that's great to see, you know, more prepared, more aware, enough budget, which is kind of not always the case, enough budget to do what they need to do. I think that's all good news. Um, you know, it's also good news to see that investments are increasing in, you know, established areas, um, cloud security, data security, data privacy, application security, identity and access management, infrastructure protection, and integrated risk management. So those are areas that are all uh, that are all super important. And I also noticed from the report that there are some emerging areas that were identified in the Imanti report. Um, Joe and I talk a lot about these areas on this show. In fact, um, identity threat de detection and response, cyber asset attack service management, Gen AI, cybersecurity, AI, digital risk protection services, automated security control assessment, breach and attack simulation, external attack service management, digital forens forensics and incident response and exposure management. So all of those areas were identified by the State of Cybersecurity Report from Avanti as emerging areas. So, um, you know, another positive sign that gives me a great joy, Avanti's research showed that boards are increasingly invested in cybersecurity outcomes. Again, topic that Joe and I have covered, it seems like multiple times here, is often the dearth of security slash cybersecurity slash IT experience at all on corporate boards. So it's great to see that boards are understanding the importance of cybersecurity. Um, 80% of the folks surveyed by Avante said their boards include someone with cybersecurity or security experience. 86% indicate that's a topic of discussion at the board level. So I think that awareness is happening. We're starting to see that pivot. Um, that's a very big deal, obviously. And, you know, this board level attention is so critical because it positions cybersecurity not only as a technology risk, which it is, but it's a critical business risk and, and really understanding that cybersecurity must be a, a key consideration across strategic C-level decisions from everything from retooling supply chains and vetting acquisitions to weighing whether or not to enter to mar new markets. I mean, security plays an outsized role. So I love seeing some of those data points. Yeah, me too. And anybody that knows me well knows that I'm a you know class A nerd. So they won't find it funny that before I attend a conference, I sort of scroll through the briefings yeah. to get a sense of what the show producers, of course, to look at my schedule and figure out where I want to go. But sure. I also want to get an overall sense of what the producers, in this case, in form of for Black Hat, what they're going to be serving up. Um, and if you look at the briefing section on the Black Hat website, there are 24 categories of talks that took place. And that was everything from AI to threat hunting and incident response. But then if you take a closer look at how those 90 or so briefings broke out into categories, probably no surprise again to someone else, to anyone that's listening, but 15% were AI focused. Yeah. Another 15% were offensive application security focused. About 10% were cloud security focused. And then 12% fell under the category of enterprise security. So that's kind of how the numbers were yeah. down. And if you attended the show, you kind of saw that. Um, I don't know if that means personally that interest in cloud security is cooling um, and interest in AI because this has been the year of AI has been, you know, sort of more hyped, I'm not sure. Um, but in this election year, two of the keynotes focused on elections and the presidency. So. Very interesting, a fight for secure elections around the world, not only here in, in this country, right. and a view into problem solving from the White House. So more focus at the governmental level on security that affects all of us. And then another, the keynotes focused on, I know, you guessed it, Gen AI or AI, right? <laughs> so. 
What did you see, Kelly? Well, no, I would say, you know, AI is always a big topic of conversation uh, at all of these events. And so since AI was such a key piece of conversation, you know, it's interesting to see how security pros are seeing AI kind of fit into their operations. You know, we're all sort of infatuated with new disruptive tech. AI is, is, you know, having its 15 minutes of fame. I, that doesn't mean in any way to denigrate the importance of AI. I think AI is incredibly, uh, plays a huge role. And, and a lot of this is, you know, when we're talking about proactive security operations and things like that, what AI in, inserted into the mix does is, you know, able to monitor and alert and see patterns and some things like that, sometimes before humans can. So I think AI is truly an important part of the equation. And I don't expect that to be that to change anytime soon. And by the way, you know, I mean, security vendors have been using AI in their solutions for many years now. Uh, what I'm talking about, though, is not only that, but it's the rise of Gen AI and how that is also being used to kind of help speed up operations and things like that. Um, I think that, you know, one of the things that was interesting to me was the shift away from the hype you know, the AI hype and a mood toward kind of understanding how uh, the incorporation of AI and LLMs into existing tool sets is happening and, and how that is going to play a role. And, you know, it's it's the conversations have shifted to instead of, you know, pie in the sky conversations around the beauty of AI, it's more practical. And we're seeing conversations about the practical application of AI and Gen AI as it, it, as it relates to kind of what I talked about here a minute ago, improving threat detection, automating responses, and, you know, really enhancing an organization's overall security posture. Uh, a lot of the conversations that we saw were centered around integration and delivering real-time benefits. Um, AI briefings during Black Hat tended to be prescriptive in nature, ranging from topics like, you know, a year in the trenches to faster, smarter security in the age of AI, you know, really action based. And so it's great to see the shift that's happening. And this is not only in the security space, but it's great to see the shift happening from AI and Gen AI applications and, and challenges in the cybersecurity space. But it's interesting to see the shift from now let's talk about practicalities. This is real use cases, real success stories. This is how this works in the real world. And, and I think that's a big step forward. Yeah, it is. And I, you know, I mean, cloud security was 10% of the briefing. So it's still an important yeah. topic, right? And we come across, you know, we end up going to these shows and we end up sitting in on on a session that we find really interesting and one of the sessions for me was breaching aws accounts through shadow resources so yeah so three security researchers from opera security and i'm i'm you know sort of condensing this a bit but i encourage you all to take a look at it if this is your area and you want to get more learning on this um the folks from Aqua Security talked about a sort of daisy chaining effect. At least that's the way I thought about it. So some services utilize others as resources as part of their logic or operation. Normal. Interesting enough, enough it could, turns out that this could lead to catastrophic results if done unsafely. So this talk presented six critical vulnerabilities that the researchers found in AWS, along with stories and methodologies behind them. And these vulnerabilities, which are all promptly acknowledged and fixed right away by AWS, um, could allow external attackers to breach almost any AWS account. So it's fair to say that this idea of shadow resources could have happened to any one of the hyperscalers since many services inside their specific cloud portfolios build upon one another. Right. But back to what the researchers found, the vulnerabilities range, uh, they sort of range from remote code execution, which could lead to full account takeover, to information disclosure, partially exposing sensitive data, or causing denial of service. The session shared the story of discovery, how they were able to identify commonalities, and then develop a method to undercover or uncover more vulnerabilities and enhance the impact by using common te 
techniques leading to privilege escalation. So they then detailed their approach for mapping service external resources and release by using an open source, open source tool to research service internal APIs. The takeaway for me is that there is so much interdependence as cloud footprints become more complex. Yeah. Things like this happen, right? They just they, do. They just do. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, your point too, this could happen to any of the hyperscalers, I think is key too. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, you know, and, and so you got me thinking about daisy chaining, you know, with this example. And, you know, when you think about this from a strict electrical engineering definition, it's a, it's a wiring scheme in which multiple devices are wired together in a sequence. But if you broaden the definition, you start to think of topics like shadow resources that ha depend on other resources, sort of like supply chain. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the keynotes that was of interest to me was the CEO and founder, uh, co-founder of ThreatLocker, Danny Jenkins. And he spoke about understanding and reducing supply chain and software vulnerability risks. We've had that same conversation here mm -hmm. on our show with uh, Schneider Electric CTO. And uh, so that is a certainly a hot topic. You know, a hot topic, Gartner projects that 45% of global, global organizations will experience a supply chain attack by 2025, three times higher and that risk was uh, evaluated in 2021. And so that makes it safeguarding supply chains more important than ever. Um, you know, I think that in complex software ecosystems, you've got individual app risks that are compounded. And, and when it comes to mitigating supply chain risk, doing things like identifying backdoors or unintended vulnerabilities that can be exploited in your environment is just as critical as staying up to date with the latest hacking intel or, you know, endpoint management or whatever, and, and understanding how to spot and reduce the risk to your environment and prevent disruption to operations as it relates to all things supply chain is just incredibly important. So I was really glad to see that topic addressed in a, a number of instances at Black Hat. Yeah, and it is a broader conversation, right? Yeah. And to your point earlier, supply chain is integral to any business. Yeah. So the fact that we're now having these cybersecurity conversations about supply chain right. only sort of fosters the, the idea that cybersecurity is integral to any business. Right. Well, and I also like, you know, we've talked about this before, like a software bill of materials and things like that. I think mm -hmm. we're starting to see that become more of an industry sort of standard, you know, hopefully more than just a trend, but really being able to look at what it is you're buying, what you're, what you're integrating into your software stack and seeing this bill of materials, I think will go a long way toward helping us keep things safe too. Yeah, S bombs are coming into their own. That's yep, for sure. They are. Um, they are. They're starting to come into their own. But you know, Black Hat's a, a conference, and you can always count on some cool new products. Yeah, true products and services shown off at every conference. So I picked four that I thought might be interesting, and yep. I was hoping we could run through them. Sure, let's um, do it. All right, App Omni, Secure Onyx, Qualys, and Veronis. So, App Omni's. SaaS security offerings. So App Omni is a leader in SaaS security, and they unveiled new technology to enhance identity and threat detection in enterprise SaaS environments. And we've talked about the fact that everybody's SaaS stack is growing, right? And there's not really a good way uh, to, and there haven't been a lot of good ways, I should say, to sort of test the security boundaries of that SaaS stack, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of cool. Um, their products, App Omni's, in, include identity-centric analysis with patent-pending log sequencing and user behavior analytics. So you can see who is popping into that, that software at your company, right? right? If you don't have it locked down as well as you should have, and this will give you an idea about that. Um, they also provide a comprehensive security health dashboard. So their event maturity matrix now supports products like Snowflake, which a lot of companies use, and Viva Vault. Um, and this offers better log gap identification and incident response verification. Um, the dashboard provides executive insights 
into the SaaS security posture. So cool thing for you to pull up to your boss and say, I need more money for security, please. Um, something like that, maybe. Um, but this will also, pardon me, aid the team in <coughs> reducing soft alert fatigue. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I need to take a sip of water. I think that's kind of cool. You know, why don't you take a sip of water and I know right. we're gonna we're gonna slide into your next one. We are secure onyx, AI reinforced seam. So lots of seams out there. Um, a lot of folks have them, but this secure onyx product introduces two new capabilities into their eon suite, a cyber data fabric and a noise canceling seam. And who doesn't want some noise canceled in the scene? Absolutely. Right? Everybody we talk to that runs one. Because <laughs> they why? Because they get too many. Yeah. What? False positives, right? So happens. But what we don't want is the team to sort of turn their ears off or turn their eyes off to what's happening, right? So this noise canceling is kind of cool to me. Um, right. and it's targeted cyber ops teams to help them tackle sophisticated cyber attacks more effectively. So the cyber data fabric offers this modular approach for architecture for intelligent data classification, also interesting. Um, and that is to ensure that relevant data is analyzed, stored, and archived efficiently. Right. And back to the noise, the integration improves cost efficiency, but the noise canceling reduces alert fatigue by 50%. Allowing the timing a that, lot, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Allowing to focus on critical threats and minimizing the yeah. positives. Yeah. So right. anyhow, on to you. Uh let's see. Um did you did you I thought there were a couple others that you wanted to touch oh, on? Oh, you're right. Okay, you're yeah. right. I am missing yeah. I am missing a couple. Yep. That's okay. okay. I thought yeah, I'm gonna yeah, just I am missing dive a back in. Uh, let me dive back in. Right. Qualys patchless remediation. So Qualys announced true risk eliminate. This is a new remediation solution designed to enhance, enhance risk reduction beyond traditional pathing methods. Um, so true risk eliminates offers patchless approach, including targeted isolation, advanced mitigation. Um, and the solution is designed to address the challenges of unpatched vulnerabilities. That's what they're really after. And that can lead to significantly reducing your security risks. Um, next one I want to talk about is Veronis, their AI powered data classification. We're starting to see more of this, right? For people to really get the benefits of, so today, think about a lot of organizations out there and it's pretty common data lives in different silos. Right. If you're going to really unleash the power of AI, you have to know not only where your data is, but how it's labeled so that AI can access it. Yeah. And so this data classification um, leverages its own machine learning to discover, understand, and classify customer data efficiently. And it gives you classifiers. So the company, you know, it, it doesn't... Re require a lot of training internally for it to do its thing and help you classify your data, which has always been sort of a, just a grown task for most, most IT teams, right? Right. Um, and they're, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you into a situation where the data is classified. It, it's going to help you improve your risk prioritization. It's going to help you, it's going to help, uh, with exposure and it's going to help you better control from a security perspective what data it is that you do have so things don't get missed. Right. And you know what I love the most about this, the Veronis solution is that it allows this local data scanning without needing to transfer data outside your environment. And I think that is very attractive to a lot of people. That's huge. That is huge, right? That's that's one of the things that people are worried about. Yeah. They're worried about their data getting outside, right? As they so, should be. <laughs> yeah, for as sure. They should be, as they should be. Okay, I'm going to hop on to just a handful of companies that got my attention. NetRise has um, extended, let's see, 
So NetRise is an extended Internet of Things security provider, and they announced some expansions of its platform. They now support the analysis of containers and Windows software assets. And this is cool because this enhancement offers increased visibility across the software supply chain. We were just talking about the importance of that, right? But it enables your security teams to inventory and control all your software assets and address risks. And some of the key features of this new offering include machine learning based software composition analysis, enhanced software extraction and dependency mapping, which is also, I think, kind of cool. Uh, Beyond Identity is another company making some news at Black Hat. They launched what they call Reality Check, which is an identity assurance plugin for Zoom. Okay, now I'm going to say, you know, we had a whole conversation here on this show not very long ago about the dangers that collaboration platforms present in the enterprise. So I love seeing something like this and this identity assurance plugin for Zoom addresses exactly the concerns we were discussing in that episode. And Mm -hmm. so Reality Check protects against AI deception, impersonation attacks, deep fakes. It certifies all call participants with what's called Authenticator Assurance Level 3 and device security verification. This feature adds things like authentication badges, uh, displays your risk data, it verifies users and devices. This was initially launched for Zoom, although Beyond Identity plans to extend this to other communications platforms like email and chat. I am here for this. I think it's incredibly important. Um, You know, I wrote about this uh, really about a week ago, HPE, um, their Aruba networking introduced some behavioral analytics based network detection and response capabilities. And I think we're going to be seeing more of this. Joe, you mentioned this as well, behavioral analytics capabilities. Um, I think that's, that's really this next gen of cybersecurity solutions that we're seeing. So, um, not only did, did HPE Aruba networking introduced that, but the response capabilities, and then they enhanced its cloud-based universal zero trust network access approach by extending its reach to campus-based local area networks. So I thought that was really pretty cool. Um, Indoor Labs is another one. Uh, They launched two capabilities designed to address challenges in the software composition analysis market and software, Um, particularly difficulties associated with open, with upgrading open source software dependencies. And and this is needed to fix vulnerabilities without causing breaking changes. Um, The newly introduced upgrade impact analysis, this will enable AppSec teams to access to assess rather the difficulty of upgrades and this will allow them to prioritize the security fixes that are on their to-do list and help them make kind of more informed decision based on the potential impacts of what they see in this mm-hmm. list in this dashboard list and um you know endure magic patches Um, are really kind of cool because they provide backported security patches, which allow teams to mitigate vulnerabilities when upgrading is just too complex or time consuming. So you don't have time to do a full upgrade right now, but I can use a backported security patch. And I think this is really cool and a tool that people are going to find incredibly valuable. But these are all designed, these capabilities are all designed to streamline the remediation process to help reduce the developer workload and enhance security measures without compromising that software stability. So I think we see lots of a theme there on on this front playing out a little bit. And the last last company that kind of got my attention was Checkmarks and their container security solution. Um, Their new container security solutions, part of the cloud native Checkmarks One application security platform, Again, speaking to productivity and efficiency, this team, this solution aims to boost uh, efficiency by integrating security into workflows that are already familiar to developers, but also offering that vulnerability identification insights that developers can use and then streamline mitigation. So um, check marks solution will combine static analysis with runtime monitoring. This will provide a comprehensive view into container security. Um, it's it, unique 
in the in the fact that it's that it's able to identify and flag malicious packages, Checksmarks has claimed, and then this solution enhances a company's proactive response capabilities, helping organizations improve their security posture. So, Joe, you know, I mean, like I said, I think we see a theme, a theme here, right? It's being proactive, not reactive. It is, um, you know, reducing the load on developers that, you know, I mean, they carry a pretty heavy load, um, a real awareness of supply chain security. What are, what are you, you know, what sits in your mind at the top trends that, that, you see. I think you're right. I think we're going to see more user behavior. Yeah. Baked Absolutely. in, right? Baked into the tool. Okay. Yeah. This user's not supposed to be in Spain. Well, right? no, or, or, you know, I've seen Joe popping in here, but she's never been before. Is that really Joe or, you know, really Joe, right? Yeah. I mean, and we're starting to see another thing that's sort of baked in this risk scoring. Yes. Right. Which is kind of super interesting to me too. Um, you know, well, I, I love the, you know, technology that helps you prioritize. I mean, I feel this way sometimes. I mean, I walk out of my office, I go do something, I come and sit back down. I'm like, okay, crap, where was I? What do I start? What's on fire? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like being able to have that prioritization, that risk yeah. prioritization, I think will yeah. be really helpful. Yeah, yeah. that's cute. Um, yeah. Right. So it was a good show. It was. It was a good show. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up and say, I think what's pretty obvious, and at least to, to Joe and me, um, security is never boring. Uh, and I am so happy to wear, you know, the nerd hat as it relates to this kind of stuff, because I think it's fascinating. You know, we've got lots of traction in the industry. We've got tons of legacy players doing exciting things. And we've got a whole bunch of newer companies bringing innovative solutions to the table. I think that, you know, for me, and I, I know that I can speak for you as well here, Joe, what's so exciting is that, you know, to see cybersecurity finally having earned a central role as it relates to business operations and to see boards beginning to understand the importance of cybersecurity. Of course, they should be because a ransomware attack, you know, is going to cost millions and millions of dollars. And so as it relates to business resilience, business continuity, I think, and, you know, I, I, I tend to always look for, I tend to be one of those really annoying people that can always find a silver lining, you know, the, and the CrowdStrike outage was, was an unfortunate situation. Um, and, and there were many people whose you know, had a day or a few days of really challenging operations. But but I think that, you know, when I walk away from something like that, I think what we learned was that focusing on business resilience and business continuity is so business mission critical. And this is what happens when our company can't do business for a period of time. And what that means from a financial perspective standpoint, from a customer experience standpoint, from all those sorts of things. So I love seeing, I love seeing cybersecurity kind of get the attention that it deserves. And I know you feel the same way. I do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So these nerds were on board. All right, friends, this is Shelly Kramer signing off for me and Joe Peterson. Thank you for hanging out with us on this episode of the Security Angle. You will um, see us again here next week. So with that, signing off and thanks for spending time with us.